vacation, bringing their families on the mm -hmm. boats with them. So we want to make sure you're staying safe. And we've got Carolina in the mornings. Molly Oak live this morning talking about some of the safety gear you want to make sure you have. Absolutely. One of the things that you want to make sure you do before hitting the water is go through a vessel safety check. So Captain Tom Bello joins us now. What is a vessel safety check for those who don't know? A vessel safety check simply ensures that you have the appropriate safety equipment on your boat that complies with federal, state, and local regulations. It only takes about 10 to 20 minutes to do a vessel safety okay. inspection depending on the size of your boat. And best of all, it's absolutely free. So what kind of items are you looking for when you perform that check? This always depends on the size of the boat, but the okay. ones that we typically check for is having the appropriate number of life jackets, okay. throwable cushions, visual distress signals such as these flares that are not expired, you've got to have at least three of those, the appropriate number of fire extinguishers, and a sound producing device such as a horn or a whistle. Okay. Now these are mandatory pieces of equipment, but there's other recommended equipment that we, that we suggest as well, such as having a first aid kit upon your boat and also having a VHF radio. Right, we learned about that a little earlier this morning. That's pretty good, pretty yes, dependable. That's right. So I think something that you all of a sudden think about when you hear about a check is, all right, what happens if I pass? What happens if I fail? Right, so when you pass your vessel safety check, you'll receive a Coast Guard decal like this okay. that will go on the side of your vessel. Okay. This shows the Coast Guard and any other law enforcement agencies that you happen to pass by that you were in full compliance with all regulations at the time of your vessel safety check. Okay. If you do not pass, there's no fees, there's no citations. All right, so you don't get in trouble. No. <laughs> all you do is get a copy of the form that we use that shows you which um, items still need to be addressed. Oh, okay. And once you address those, you just contact your vessel examiner and he or she will come back out and reinspect your vote. And so you, you said it's only 10 or 20 minutes, so how do we request one of these? The easiest way okay. is to send an email okay. to vscwilmington at gmail.com, okay. and one of our 25 vessel safety inspectors will schedule an appointment with you. All right, so you, well, like he said before, it's only about 10, 20 minutes, and it's going to make a huge difference, especially for a weekend like this weekend when a lot of people are going to be on the water. You want to make sure you're staying extra safe, Kim and Bill. Molly, explain the life jacket that you're wearing. Uh, Bill had brought this up a little earlier. You know, some of the big life jackets are kind of bulky, but what the two of you are wearing, you know, looks pretty comfortable and really easy to, you don't even know it's there. All right, Kim was noticing that our life jackets look a little different than this life jacket. So can yes. you explain kind of the benefits of having a kind of a smaller one? Yeah, so these are inflatable life jackets, and these can either be manually inflated or if you fall into the water, they can be automatically inflated. The, reasons, the, ones that, the reason why I like wearing these is that they're so much more comfortable to wear, but they're only, they're only um, required if or actually in compliance if you're actually wearing them at the time of the inspection. Okay. okay. So these can be on the boat, but for these to actually count, you have to be wearing them. Okay, good to know. There you go, Kim. That was nice. good information to know, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Molly has seen all kinds of people this morning, and that raises a very good point because I've taken both of those courses in the mm -hmm. past six months. The Power Squadron course and the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary course. You're not standing there for eight hours. The classes are eight hours, and as the sun is out now and the warmer weather, the last thing you want to do on a Saturday is be sitting in a classroom. It goes by but very quickly, mm -hmm. and they bring all of those people with them. It is not one person lecturing you for eight hours. So a lot of different people. A lot of different people talking about a lot of different specialties. They spice it up, so to speak, make it very interesting. So again, Good. if you've never been on the water and had a course before, guaranteed it is worth your investment to be able to do that. All right, good. And I got a hundred. <laughs> you got a hundred. And a gold star. And a gold star too, huh? Right. Now I just need three more. I can be an admiral. <laughs>